The Park Brass experiment was begun in 1856 by Sir John Bennett Laws, the founder of Rothamsted, and it's the last in a series of experiments he set up in the mid-1800s to look at the effect of different fertiliser treatments on the yield of crops. This experiment you can see is a hay meadow, which was an important part of the arable rotation back in the mid-1800s because it provided the food for horses. So Sir John Bennett Laws was interested in increasing the yield of hay and very quickly he demonstrated that applying fertilisers in different combinations and quantities to these plots improved the yield of hay. But also what he noticed within the first few years of the experiment was not only that the total hay yield was increasing but the botanical composition of the plots was changing dramatically. So much so that he said the plots had so distinctive a character in regard to the prevalence of different plants that the experimental ground looked almost as much as if it were devoted to trials with different seed mixes as opposed to different fertilisers. The plot I'm standing on now is the control plot, so it's never received any fertilisers. So we more or less have the kind of plant community we would have had 160 years ago. But on this plot here, which receives some chalk, we have some of the highest species numbers that are found on the experiment. We have low fertility, which means the competitive grasses aren't a problem. So as fertility goes down, we get some more interesting grass species. This is something called quaking grass, um, quite an attractive species. And we get some more of the broadleaf species like the pignut, the clovers come in. Um, we get things like the, the cat's ear growing and salad burnet, maybe 25, 30 different species of broadleaf plants that makes this a very interesting sward, a very diverse sward. The park grass experiment was originally set up to answer crop science questions, but increasingly it's being used as a unique and valuable resource by ecologists to answer questions like, why do certain environments support more species than others? And in order to answer that kind of question, we need to know what plant species are present on the plots and how much of them. To gather that information, we go out to the field and we physically cut small squares or quadrats of the material from the plots to take back to the lab to analyse. This is all done before the whole plot is mown by a tractor and the hay removed. The experiment is mown once in mid-June and again in late autumn or early winter. Here we have the samples that were taken in the field in the lab being sorted by a team and what people are doing here is separating out all the individual species from the plots and putting them into separate small piles on the bench. And if you remember that some of the plots could have 25 to 30 or even more species, you can imagine that's quite a time consuming task. For this plot for example we have quite a number of different species including four or five grass species that need to be separated out into their individual piles. Once we have these separate piles for each species, we actually put them into the oven overnight at 80 degrees C. This is because we're interested in the biomass or the amount of energy that is stored in the plant material and not in differences in the moisture content. We put the plants into trays and into the oven and then we weigh the remaining biomass the following morning and we can relate the relative biomass of the species found on the different plots to the fertiliser treatments and the soil properties. The park grass experiment is important because it helps us understand the effects growing crops have had on the wildlife that shares our farmland as a habitat. At Rothamsted we're using this knowledge to find ways of meeting the rising demand for food that don't have a negative impact on the plants and animals in our countryside.